Psalm 91 continued. We've been looking at the secret place as in Psalm 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we've been looking at the Song of Solomon. We see that not only in the New Testament Jesus speaks of the secret place but if we go back um, to what so Solomon wrote in the Song of Solomon we see it hidden here and we see a Shulamite um, seeking this uh, this place this place where the where the sheep rest at midday in the heat of the day that there's a place the resting place where, where he feeds his flock and let me just look at Psalm 23 we actually see the same picture here the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters And, and he restores my soul and we see here this is also the secret place we often hear Psalm 23 uh, read at funerals I've heard even uh, ministers in the who are prosperity preachers that they, they quote from the psalm but they, they're not speaking of the secret place they, they're using to try and uh, um, strengthen the argument for prosperity saying the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want and then trying to twist it as if you know for, as a prosperity scripture but that is not what the psalm is about it's actually about abiding in him and it's about coming to this place no, it's not just visiting this place but it's, but it's dwelling in this place same as Psalm 91 to dwell in this place as Christians we need to come to a place where we live um, in this closeness with Jesus Christ with our hearts turned to him and that we stay in this closeness continually all the time and there is a place of the stillness in this walk in him in the midst of the storm there can be chaos outside but there's a stillness within there's a peace beyond understanding. There's a stillness in him and how to come to this place. And it's knowing him as Jehovah. And the second part is more knowing him as Elohim. If we look from verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And this is not just words. It's actually something you experience. Because when you've got this closeness, this abiding, the anointing, the presence of God, there's a closeness. So in the midst of, even you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. It's not just so nice sounding words, this is about the presence of God. And this comes only as the revelation of, really of a closeness with him, of knowing him as Jehovah and as Elohim. Most people in the church do not have this closeness. It's not there. And the way the doctrines taught today, um, they've got a different wineskin. Where the wineskin of this last of the last days, it's all with this. It's a, it's a, a closeness. And it's the very doctrine itself. It's all integrated into the doctrine. It's not... Uh, the way it's been taught in the church is very, very different whether it's a charismatic move, the way they've been teaching it, it's it's not it's not the same as these new wine, this new wine skin which he wants to bring to the whole church. That's whether you are um, Pentecostal, charismatic, assemblies of God, Methodist, Anglican, or Catholic. It doesn't matter from uh, where you're from or you're no church at all. It's not about buildings but it's about your relationship with Jesus Christ but knowing him 
and the church is meant to bring this truth across but the church is more than just buildings it's about people that are, are born again Christians and that know him and there's a, a vision by Tommy Hicks so I'm jumping around a little I was actually still in the Song of Solomon but let me just go to this prophecy uh, by Tommy Hicks I'm not going through it again it's a very very long prophecy uh, it was repeated three times in detail to this is an, a, an American preacher Tommy Hicks who was a major figure in the 1954 Argentina revival it's a vision of the body of Christ in the end time ministries and he speaks of of the glory coming as well it's basically sees a uh, like a giant on the earth which is really lying down on in the dirt and then it raises up to heaven that's how it begins and he speaks of the glory coming and it's only as this giant raises his head and hands as into the clouds that's when the glory comes not while it's lying on the earth but as it rises up into the heavens and if you understand this foundation that I'm bringing across um, this gospel is also a heavenly gospel in other words if you know him as Elohim you receive uh, people as from the hand of God you receive circumstances as the hand of God that he's in control that he's sovereign and this takes it just from um, a, just a quiet time a time alone with God knowing him as Jehovah to all of life to in our day-to-day -day walk it takes a just from a time with God alone with God to to 24 7 to a whole to encompass our whole lives and that's a revelation of him as Elohim and with this revelation um, your life on earth is no longer you're not earthly you actually become heavenly because you receive people and everything is from the hand of God so it's like you're living in a different everything's very different you're living basically in it's actually in the secret place in this place in God and this is what David was speaking of there's a place in God it's so glorious it's like heaven on earth and it's a secret place of the most high but to come into this place not all Christians are living here some are just saying oh yes the word says so therefore I'm living in this place no that's not true at all and that's what this new wineskins is about it's about for the church to come into this place of living in the secret place and the revelation of knowing him is Jehovah and as Elohim it's a simple way of uh, of actually understanding of how to to come into this place to live in him and it's that's what the giant as it rises up in other words as we become heavenly as we gra we grasp the revelation of him as Elohim we become heavenly we receive things not as from the hand of man but from the hand of God you see everything we receive from him as it becomes heavenly and we become heavenly and that's when that happens the giant actually rises up and when their hands are in the clouds when we become heavenly that's when the glory comes and that's when the glory begins to be manifested and that's what's in this vision by Tommy Hicks that this this uh, great giant begins to rise with his head and his hands went into the clouds but he doesn't state what's behind it I'm giving the foundation behind it how one's head and one's hands um, come into the clouds it's not just a rising up it's not just saying we're going to serve God type thing it's coming to live in the secret place and becoming heavenly 
And as we come heavenly and live in this place, that's when the glory comes. And there's actually quite a lot with this vision. One thing I found quite interesting that um, it said, um, it says, yeah, but these people that he had anointed hundreds of, uh, of thousands of people all over the world, in Africa, England, Russia, China, America, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forward in the name of the Lord. One thing is quite interesting of the places Africa's mentioned first. Is that significant? Africa mentioned first. I'm thinking of of what um, the prophet Selvaraj, what he said. Uh, I think it was in Tanzania. I'm just going to the prophecy. What he said in Tanzania last year. Uh, this was at a conference in Dar es Salaam in October, Tanzania. Prophet Sadhu Sundar Selvaraj. He spoke in from ja beginning in January 2019. The Spirit of God will come like a flood to cleanse the church. He spoke of a flood of a tsunami will come into the church. It will sweep all over Africa. A mighty great power is going to fall on Africa. A great revival is going to begin from Cairo to Cape Town. Such a revival that you have never seen in the history of Africa. That you have never seen in the history of Africa. So we see here that there is a prophecy about Africa. And also with this here from January 2019 onwards and Tommy Hicks mentioned Africa first is this the beginning of the final move of God is it about to begin in Africa we see also the the prophetic words he had with Australia and how that um, this could be a bit later, but from Australia it will spread through to New Zealand, to England, UK, and to the Western nations as well, which could be another part of this end time move. But you could find it seems like it will start in Africa, and there will be another um, outflowing of it from Australia. But one thing is important is is the secret place which I'm speaking of today and this is more of the the apostolic uh, foundation what you actually seeing a lot now is prophets coming forth and bringing the timing of this move but I've noticed that the prophets do not have a deep revelation of this foundation Um, it's been revealed to certain more apostolic people and there's a, it's a much greater depth of this foundation. And I've noticed that uh, in what's been coming forth that there are people that are trying to, that are moving trying to move with these things, but they haven't really been established in the secret place and they haven't had this really this foundation. And the people that have really been in the past have had been strong in this and really had a depth in this. People like Jean Guyon, Molinos, people in the 1600s. They moved powerfully in in the glory of God. Um, they knew what it was to live in the secret place. And they had this richness and a closeness uh, to Jesus Christ that is all about him. And this is what is being restored to the church in these these last of the last days. I was in the prophetic myself more uh, about, I think it was about 10, 10, 15, 20 years ago. 
and then the Lord took me more into the apostolic and the difference is um, in the prophetic it's more with visions with dreams having a word from the Lord but it's quite important uh, that there's a there's a deeper walk with him than the prophetic and the apostolic is more where even those things sometimes they need, they need to sometimes we need to have a death of those things and it's a more simply um, a turning to Jesus Christ a much simpler just where there's a presence of God we're living in his glory and it's actually a simpler without even visions without dreams he restores those eventually they are you know back with dreams visions and with even hearing his voice but what's central is not is not um, even his revelations but he himself and just that abiding in him and just in his presence that becomes central I've noticed the pro uh, in the prophetic movement everybody is there's such a everybody's looking for you know it's more with revelations with open visions with uh, that's what they're looking for but they don't realize that there's a deeper walk and often the deeper walk is something where you, got, where you actually lay aside these things God starts taking them taking these things away and you live in a simpler existence in him and it's more just in the glory of God and the manifestations from the glory but it's a much simpler walk in God so the apostolic is actually very different from the prophetic it's more an eternal foundation a timeless foundation it's pure and sound and sometimes in the prophetic there's a mixture of the flesh coming in so a mixture of what's of God and what's not but those have been more in the apostolic um, there's more of a, a death, a dying the cross is more there and there will be much less which is of the flesh and what was and they're not so concerned about bringing forth a word here, a word there all the time in the way that the prophetic are um, so there's, there's a definitely a difference and a depth which apostolic have which a prophetic don't have and that is why in this end times it's not the prophetic that are bringing this foundation they're pointing to the timing of the foundation but the, the depth of of this foundation, this new wineskins comes not from the prophetic but from the apostolic and it's not just simply an imparting of an anointing and you'll just flow in in what's what's to come there's a lot more to this to this foundation to this these new wineskins and just simply we see it in Psalm 23 knowing him as Jehovah he leads me be beside the still waters there's a stillness within a peace which, which passeth understanding and it's turning our hearts to him and there's also patience awaiting we don't uh, press in ourselves we don't try and conjure things up ourselves that's where a lot of the problems arise I've I've read about some of these movements and how, how somebody said they'll even go up to heaven to bring God down and that type of thing is a no-no we don't do that we wait for the Lord to draw us to himself we patiently wait for him that's where the cross comes into effect and we're only moved by the Holy Spirit there's nothing of the flesh and so it's the still waters and we're only moved by the Spirit of God not we don't move ourselves you wait for him to draw us into into his presence there's a place 
um, in the secret place. You actually dwell in the tent. We don't live in the outer court. We live um, in the tent, in the tabernacle. But uh, we, we can't take ourselves into the Holy of Holies. That is God's... Um, um, his, he takes the initiative there. Um, there are times he will draw us into a deeper place in the Holy of Holies. But he does that sovereignly according to his will and according to his pleasure. So there is a side with that that you can't just barge into the Holy of Holies. You can't do it yourself. You've got to wait for him to draw you uh, in his time. And as he pleases, even though that we still dwell in the secret place continually, you can learn to dwell in him. But there's still um, a place where, where he draws us deeper in his time. And it's always sovereignly as, as he draws us, as he leads initiatives with him. Let me just turn back to the the commentary on the Song of Solomon I was looking at. This is from Jean Guyon from the 1600s. Um, a lady who was used to uh, a tremendous influence on people like John Wesley, Hudson Taylor. Powerfully used at that time. And there's a richness and a purity um, in a ministry that's, that's often not... Um, visible today and it's powerful it's very real it's not just theology it's about living in him it's very very real and I'm just moving a little on and she was just speaking of this this place we where, where the shepherd brings brings you to rest at noon, the sheep at noon, the secret place. And I will just bring a one nugget here as well. Um, is, is in Matthew 17, 18, 21. Uh, I think we were coming down from the mountain uh, of transfiguration. And some of the disciples could not, why could we not cast out these demons? They were struggling to cast out demons and Jesus came and just cast them out straight away. And they asked him, why, why could we not cast it out? And so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, you will say to this mountain, move from here and there to there, it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not come out by prayer and fasting. And if you look carefully, um, you will see that um, these two scriptures, one is prayer and one is fasting, where the secret place is mentioned in Matthew 6.6 6 and 6.18. It says, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to the Father who is in the secret place. So we see prayer in the secret place, fasting in verse 18 in the secret place. And we we've just read the scripture, prayer and fasting. In other words, if you come to dwell in this place, in the secret place, then you'll be in a place where the glory is there, um, the manifestation of, of his presence. You'll find that with, with deliverance and with casting out demons, um, you'll be like Jesus Christ himself. You'll have that authority to cast them out where the disciples struggled you'll be able to do it and this was true in the, even in the ministry of Catherine Kuhlman um, that the demons left very quickly um, people that don't live in this place in this glory they can struggle sometimes with delivering people it's a lot of work it's a lot of effort it's a struggle in the things of God but when you're living in this place of this glory, ministry becomes easy. It, there's an anointing. There's an authority. A great authority comes with um, with this end time move of God. But that authority is not, um, it only comes with the glory. 
this closeness to him and it's an apostolic foundation it's not a, a foundation of primary it's not mainly of of visions for dreams and for revelation it's actually of a closeness to him it's an apostolic foundation and with that comes the glory and the authority there will be dreams there will be revelations but that's not the primary focus it's Jesus himself not his word not anything that but he himself and it's a simple turning our hearts to him and dwelling in him and the simpler the better it's a simple relationship with him and a very powerful relationship with him this is the apostolic foundation it's actually of abiding in him the secret place and according to the, with the scripture that that's the key with with deliverance and they weren't at this stage living in this place the disciples that's why they didn't have have that authority that to actually in this case but if you're living in this glory it will be very different as in these times that are ahead of us and we see the, this in the Psalms quite a bit with this this is the uh, the secret place you called in trouble and I delivered you I answered you in the secret place of thunder I tested you at the waters of Meribah and in Jeremiah 50 verse 6 they have forgotten their resting place in other words this place the secret place they have forgotten this place and many people in the church have forgotten this place and this is my resting place forever Psalm 130 verse 14 and Isaiah 11:10 says for the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious it's a glorious place Jesus spoke of this in Matthew 11 come to me all you labor and are heavy laden I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light So we see a little here in the Song of Solomon with the, um, the secret place. And then in the next verse it says, If you do not know, fairest among women, go out by the footsteps of the flock and feed your young goats beside the shepherd's tent. So here's the answer of how to find the secret place. If you don't know where it is, how do I find it? How do I come to this place? And the bridegroom replies to the bride and prepares her to receive his grace. It gives a most important instruction. If you do not know, go forth. Go forth. It suggests that you cannot know the one you love except you also come to know yourself as you really are. You may passionately seek to know your God, but you must also see your nothingness next to his everything. And in this foundation, you will actually see that that's actually what happens. It brings one to a place where it's, it's basically of Jesus and him only. And, and it's to a place of nothingness, and that he is everything, of being poor in spirit. This all, it all ties in. It's very rich, this language. Um, but as we move more into this foundation, you'll understand exactly why. The, you'll understand the importance of this but how will you see this the light needed to discover your nothingness exists only in seeing all the all of God he directs you therefore to go forth away from yourself how th through the letting go of yourself you must allow no natural satisfaction yourself or any other person to where to enter into God by an absolute self-surrender where you will find that he is all and in all Colossians 1 17 3 2 you will see your you'll need to see yourself and everyone else as nothing in the light of God it 
so it's basically it's, things become all of Jesus himself it becomes all of him not of yourself or of anyone else but he becomes when you live in this place in the secret place of the most high it's all of Jesus not of not of yourself and not of anyone else that's what it speaks of the going forth and it also speaks of to go forth in the footsteps of the flock it is to go forth in a common or ordinary way um, the bridegroom desires that you also not neglect your duties in the place where he has called you you must follow the Holy Spirit's leading in all the freedom of the inward life you must also conform to the same semblance of the external trappings of faith by being obedient to proper, proper authority in other words what you're saying is this is knowing him as Elohim saying in our everyday life uh, we receive things that come into our life as from the hand of God and not from the hand of man from our boss as from the hand of God and not from the hand of man um, so, so that's what is what's saying is, is it, it's a revelation of him as Elohim so we see basically the first part is to go forth is actually coming to know him the revelation who is Jehovah and the second part knowing him as Elohim and so so this this may be rather deep at the moment because I'm just actually really introducing these things but I'm showing you that there's there's a lot more to to the scriptures here it's very very deep even in the very first chapter of the Song of Solomon there's so much truth here and it's all about the, um, the secret place living in him and it's to do with uh, taking up his cross daily it's coming to this place of knowing him but it's a it's really a glorious place and this is what the prophets are saying that that there's a, a new wine skin that we need to have it doesn't matter if we are Pentecostal charismatic assembly of God Methodist Anglican even Catholic throughout the board whether we go to church or we don't this is for all Christians that there's a there's a time in the end we um, is bringing forth an uh, almost a new era a new reformation and it, it requires a new wineskin that we may cross over the Jordan we can only cross over the Jordan having this apostolic foundation knowing him as Jesus Christ and him crucified this is the new wineskin um, having this new wineskin we can cross over and be part of the final harvest before the Lord comes this is the final, the last great revival, the last great move of God at the end of the age. But you need to have the, um, the new wineskin in order to move into it. And just to put it simply, it's, it's all about living and dwelling in the secret place. A deep um, abiding in Jesus Christ himself. The secret place of the Most High. And that's a place... We, we, we live in the glory of God it's not so much about the gifts of God it's not about the word of God it's not about the revelation of God it's more about turning our hearts to him himself and a closeness and abiding presence with him and out of that closeness with him um, abiding in the secret place the glory is there and and there will be manifestations of this glory and that's when the signs the wonders and the miracles take place but we mustn't seek the miracles we mustn't seek the signs or the wonders even revelation don't seek visions don't seek dreams or open visions um, rather it's just um, be satisfied just be living in his presence and that closeness in him that's all that is needed nothing more a simple abiding in him and that's the apostolic foundation that we need to have um, 
that's the new wineskins and there's a tremendous depth in it and I'll be um, looking into this um, not only the prophecies which is just more pointing to this but also into the revelation of of these things the apostolic foundation much more depth in the days ahead god bless